All right, starting off here first with a 1964 D Mint Mark. Now this quarter design was actually struck onto a 1964 silver Roosevelt dime. So you can see both designs of the dime as long with the Washington quarter. You can see the outline of Roosevelt's head and neck there uh, above Washington's head and you can actually see the date of the dime as well and the phrase in God we trust there and then here on the reverse uh, you can see that there as well so you'll see that uh, most noticeably on the bottom of course this is uh, struck onto a dime so the whole quarter design will not fit onto it and this coin ended up selling at auction for over $4,300 over a $4,000 coin graded by NGC at a Mint State 65. Now here is what you know a typically uh, a regular quarter would look like right 1965 Washington quarter here that sold for over $5,000. Now why would this coin sell for that much money? Well it's because they stopped producing 90% silver quarters for circulation in 1964. So this is a 1965 quarter. This is not supposed to be silver however it is a 1965 quarter design that is silver. It was struck onto a silver planchet. So that is the mint error and that will give it a lot of value. Over $5,400 for this coin at auction. Graded by PCGS at an XF45. So it's not a high grade, uh, you know, high graded coin. It's definitely been circulated, you know, uh, been passed around at some point. And someone found the quarter and, you know, got it graded. All right, so here's another example of that 1965 Washington quarter design struck onto a silver planchet. This coin is graded at a Mint State 62, so uh, even higher grade, much higher than an XF45. So better condition coin here, and this coin sold for over $16,000. So we go from a $5,000 quarter to a $16,000 quarter, all because of that condition there. It's super, super rare, and of course it depends on when you sell the coin, the market, at the time in which the auction takes place, and things like that as well. Now here's a 1965 silver quarter that's got a couple different things going on here, so we'll really see uh, that this coin has been struck through two staples. So you'll see that staple there uh, going through the word liberty as well as on the reverse of the coin here, United States of America. Very, very nice uh, mint errors here. Uh, this quarter sold at auction for over $1,400. It is graded by Annex and an older Annex holder at an AU50. So very nice mint errors there. Now here is a 1965, we should just call this 1965 video. No, we're actually going to be looking at other dates as well. This is the uh, Washington Quarter that has the obverse struck through a fragment. You can see that here clearly on the obverse of the coin, uh, that strike through taking place. This coin ended up selling for over $140 at auction. Now here's a 1967 Washington Quarter that was struck onto a one cent planchet. Uh, you know, kind of speaks for itself here, graded by PCGS at a Mint State 65 Red Brown. This coin ended up selling at auction for over $2,100. That's why it's got the copper color to it, of course, because it was struck onto a penny planchet. Now here is a 1971D Mint Mark Washington Quarter. Now this coin here has a brockage on the reverse and it has also been struck onto a Jefferson Nickel planchet. Uh, so couple different errors going on here. It's going to make the coin super rare and valuable, of course. That's why this coin ended up selling for over $4,300. 4300 there. Now here's a 1977, what looks like a regular 1977 Washington quarter, but it weighs around 6.78 grams, and that's because it was struck onto a half dollar stock. Uh, so, you know, always weigh your quarters. Uh, you know, it's definitely not going to weigh 6.78 grams. This coin ended up selling in this condition, pretty rough, you know, shape, graded at an AU50. In this condition, the coin sold for a little over $50. Not too bad. Here's a 1979 Washington Quarter. You know, it doesn't have a grade. It's been uh, circulated. It's got a lot of scratches. However, this quarter design was struck onto a Jefferson Nickel Planchet. Uh, so that will make the coin valuable. It will give the coin a lot of value. This coin ended up selling at auction for over $180 in that condition. So not too bad for a coin like that. And then here on the reverse, of course, you can see the design of the Jefferson Nickel. Pretty cool mint error there. All right, moving on to a 1985 
Washington quarter here on the reverse looks very normal here on the obverse of the coin We are missing the outer clad layer That's why you can see the inner copper layer of the quarter and this coin ended up selling for around $60 graded by annex at a mint state 63 now here is a very famous quarter. Uh, this is the 1990 P mint mark that has been double struck and that uh, strike is flipped over in collar, of course. So we'll see the reverse design here flipped over onto the obverse of the coin as well as the uh, obverse on the reverse. Uh, so very, very nice mint error here. This quarter ended up selling at auction for around $1,500 graded by NGC at an AU58. Now here's another missing clad layer on the front of this 1991 quarter. It looks very normal, but here on the reverse, uh, we are missing that outer clad layer. So this coin ended up selling at auction for around $95. It is graded by NGC at a mint state 64. Coin grading scale goes up to 70. 70 is the best condition or the best grade you can get. Now here's a 1998. So you'll see even here on these modern coins that it's uh, you know, errors can take place and be found, obviously. This is a 1998 Washington quarter that was struck onto a five cent planchet, a Jefferson nickel planchet. That's why the whole quarter design doesn't fit onto the planchet, of course. Graded by PCGS at a Men's State 63, this coin sold for over $280 at auction. Then here is a nice no dated Washington quarter graded by PCGS at a Men's State 64. This coin has no date because it has a large die break or a cud taking place over the date here at the bottom of the coin. Uh, that extra metal there on the rim of the coin, right? Here on the reverse, you'll see it faded out on the opposite side. This coin ended up selling at auction for over $660. So you can have some die breaks that are, you know, not so valuable and you can have some that are very, very valuable. Just depends on the coin, the condition, where the die break is, how large or small the die break is, all those things, uh, you know, can affect the value. So don't forget to subscribe in the middle. Feel free to check out the videos to the left of me. And until tomorrow, I'll see you guys in the comment section below. This is Couch Collectibles and this is where I disappear.